Okay, so Junior Roberts here again with real juniorroberts.com. We're on to question five of the CSEC Physics January 2020 uh, past paper. I've done questions one, two, three, and four in a previous video. I will place a link to that entire playlist so you will be able to check out all those videos. So let's get right into question five. Okay, so question five says, complete table two by inserting the missing logic gate symbols and functions, right? Uh, so here we have our table, right? And we will be filling out this table accordingly. Okay, so our table here, it lists the logic gate, the corresponding symbol, and also the corresponding function for that logic gate, right? So in the first row, we're given the function of the first logic gate, and it says here that it changes a logic zero to logic one, right? So you'll remember that the logic gate that actually changes a logic zero to a logic one is what we call a inverter, right? And the other name for the inverter is the NOT gate. So we're gonna write that in right now. So this is the NOT gate, right? And the symbol for the NOT gate, this, the NOT gate takes in a single input, right? And produces a single output. And the symbol for that NOT gate is simply a triangle, right? With a bubble at the output, right? So that's our NOT gate. It takes in a single input and produces a single output. And whatever it takes in at the input, it inverts that and sends it to the output. Now, the next gate is the AND gate. The symbol for the AND gate is simply a symbol that looks like the letter D. That's how I actually remember the AND gate. It looks like a D. So I'm going to simply draw a D, right? And the AND gate, it takes in two input, incidentally, right? And produces a single output, right? So that's the AND gate, right? And the function of the AND gate is that it produces logic one when both inputs are logic one, right? So the AND gate, it will produce a logic one whenever both the inputs are at logic one. So let's move on. Now, the next gate is the R gate. We're given the symbol, right? Now, the function of the R gate is it produces logic one when one are both inputs are logic one, right? So the R gate is to produce a logic one when one are both the inputs are one. So if one of these is at a state of a logic one, then we're gonna get a one right here. If both are at logic state one, we will also get a one right here. Now the NAND gate, uh, we're supposed, supposed to draw the symbol right here. So let me just go ahead and actually draw the symbol for the NAND gate. Now the NAND gate and the AND gate are similar in their design or in their symbol. The only difference is that the NAND gate is opposite of the AND gate. So we represent that by putting a bubble at the output. So I'm gonna draw a symbol looking like the AND gate, right, with two inputs, right, and then at the output I'm going to put a bubble, right, which indicates that it's opposing or reversing the function of the AND gate. All right, so that's our symbol for the NAND gate. Now, when it comes down to the function, uh, I, this function here is stated incorrectly, right, what should be written is is that the NAND gate produces a logic one when one or both inputs are at logic zero, all right? So, 
Now this question here says, with the aid of a circuit diagram, describe how an alternating current, AC, can be halfway rectified to produce a direct current across a resistor load. Alright, so for this uh, we'll be sketching out a circuit diagram. So let us say we have our AC signal. Alright, I'm going to represent it by a circle with a sign aside a symbol so this is our ac signal all right then connected to the ac signal we will have a diode all right which looks like this all right and then i will have a resistor all right so that's my circuit diagram with uh, my ac supply let me just put in some labels so this is my ac supply this is my diode Right, and this is my load. Right now, with the circuit diagram, we can use it to actually get a half wave rectification done. Right, so let me just give a description as to how this is achieved. So, let's write when the AC flows in the circuit. Since the diode is forward bias, right, the positive half of the signal will be allowed to pass through to pass through and the negative half will be blocked right so blocked right so what will happen is that uh, when the AC signal let me do a sketch right here so let us say this is our AC signal Right, we know that an alternating signal actually changes direction periodically. So let us say we have one pulse of an AC signal or one cycle of an AC signal. What will happen is that this portion, right, will be allowed to pass through this diode since it is forward bias. However, this portion will be totally blocked off. All right, so that's how we would achieve halfway rectification. Now let's move on. Now this question is, says we are to sketch the voltage time graph to show the expected output across the load in B I above. All right, so uh, did they give us some? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna assume that this is 120 volts. So I'm gonna have, let us say, 120 volts. All right, and this will be minus 120. Now, since, again, the circuit is in a forward bias, all right, what will happen is we will have the positive half being allowed to pass. So we'll get something looking like this, reaches its peak voltage, and then it will start to decrease. Now, when it reaches that zero, it will want to change its direction. However, the diode is present in the circuit, and you'll remember that a diode only allows current to flow in one direction. So since here the current wants to change its direction, the diode will actually prevent that flow of current and block off any negative flow in current. All right? Then what will happen is that it will start to increase the zero and then it will flow in a positive direction. So we will get something looking like this. All right? And this series will continue for as long as the circuit is on. All right? So we'll get a waveform looking like this. We'll get a series of uh, current being current flowing, then no current, current flowing, no current, and then current flowing. All right? So let's move on. So the question here says now, draw a voltage time graph showing an AC source with a frequency of 5 hertz and a peak voltage of 12 volts. All right? So for this, 
whenever we are plotting a voltage time graph, there are two things that we need to know about the uh, voltage or the AC signal in, in a sense. We need to know the frequency, right? And we also know, need to know the period, right? In this case, we're given the frequency as five hertz. Now we know that the frequency and the period are related by this formula, where we say that the period T is equal to one divided by F, right? So since our frequency is five hertz, it means then that our period T would be equal to one divided by five hertz, right? So therefore our period then now would be 0 0.2 uh, seconds, right? So 0 0.2 seconds, all right? So a period is 0 0.2 seconds, and you will remember the definition for the period as the time taken to complete one oscillation. So therefore, it means then that our AC signal will take 0 0.2 seconds to make a complete cycle. Now, to sketch our, volt, our AC signal, right, we need to take into consideration uh, this value here, and also the peak voltage. Right, so what will happen is that we will start at zero, right, we'll increase up to the peak value, which is 12 volts in this case. So it goes something like this, reach the peak, right, go down like this, right, go to a peak, peak negative, and then go like this, right. So let me continue. Go up like this, down here, there, up like this, all right, and right there, all right. So that will be our AC waveform for a 5 hertz, 12 volt peak voltage signal, all right. So that's it for this question. Again, this was Junior Roberts with realjuniorroberts.com. If there was anything in this video that you wish to get further clarification on, please post it, below in post it down below in comments and I'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions for you. Like this video if it was helpful and if others would benefit, please go ahead and click the share button so others will be able to benefit. Please subscribe and hit the bell notification so you will never miss any of my upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.